Good morning. My name is Vanessa George, and I am delighted to have all of you here this morning. Thank you so much for coming to the party, because we're going to have a lot of fun today. So um, just a first quick question. How many of you have uh, went to the NOW conference last year and attended my session on networking versus informational interviewing? Wow. This is your first time? OK, wait, is it your first time at the NOW conference? Wow, that's awesome. That's fantastic. Yeah, <laughs> that's really great. OK, the reason I ask is because the purpose of today is to focus primarily on informational interviewing. But I will do a quick recap on networking because it's so important um, as part of the relationship between networking and informational interviewing. So I will cover a little bit about that. Um, but you can find um, the presentations that I did last year uh, that was more focused on networking on the UC Berkeley Diversity website, the NOW Conference website. So everything that you know, we've covered in the past is on the website. Also, I do not have handouts for this presentation today, but this, a copy of this PowerPoint will be on the conference website and it will be uploaded, I guess, within you know, a week or two after the conference is done. So just so you know, okay? So let's, let me talk a little bit about what we're going to cover today. So I'm going to go over, uh, again, the networking and informational interviewing, um, some of the similarities and some of the differences. We're going to do a few exercises because, like, what's the point of being in a workshop on informational interviewing and networking if you don't meet each other? Okay, so we're going to do a couple of exercises. I'm going to talk in more detail about what informational interviewing actually is. Um, and then I'm all, after we do another exercise, I'm going to go into the nuts and bolts so that you, when you walk out of here today, you'll know exactly what is meant by informational interviewing and how to do it. So this is going to be an actual practical experience. So when you walk out the door, you can start doing it while you're here at the conference. And then we're going to do a case study activity so you can actually see. This is a real live. This actually happened. You can actually see how you go about doing an informational interview for a particular purpose, and it's going to be interactive. So I'm going to you know, engage all of you, and it's going to be a lot of fun. And because this is a workshop, you're going to have some homework, but it'll be fun homework. So is that okay? does that work for you all? Is that good? OK. So before I go to the next slide, oh, come on up. We have seats up front. You know, we don't eat people. It's OK. <laughs> um, let me ask you all. Do any of you, can any of you tell me how, just, you can just guess if you don't know, but how do you think networking and informational interviewing are similar? Just, just you know, raise your hand. Yes. You might be talking to someone you don't know very well. Yes, OK, excellent. Another, another idea. Another perspective. Can I or, ask to if we can pass this mic? Oh, I want to be able to pass. Just for the recording. Anyone have another perspective? Yes. Anybody want to? Share another idea of how networking and informational interviewing are similar. Well, I put it, yeah, yeah. Great. Yeah. Trying to find out. <laughs> no, I don't even remember what I was going to say. Okay. Uh, okay. Trying to find out things about someone's job that you might you might be kind of curious how someone else's job is different from yours. Yes. And yeah. Definitely on the right track. Okay. On the right track. So basically, you've got two. Oh. Yes, go ahead, please. Yeah. <laughs> um, don't read it. Don't I mean, look, don't I mean it's about putting yourself out there and making sure that you have face time with other people. Exactly. Exactly. So both about meeting people, exchanging information, and building a network of allies. Um, they're, they're connected. You know, what we're going to talk about today, and oh, I so apologize. If you, you know, do you want to sit here? Is it easier so you can see? You, you OK? All right. Um, but it's, it is a continuum. Um, and so they're very much connected. And it's very easy to get them confused. Um, but the bottom line is that they're both about getting out there, you know, putting yourself out there, meeting people, exchanging information to learn about something specific that you have in mind, um, and building a network of allies. I love the previous presentation, the keynote presentation, where she, um, she talked about having a personal board of directors. Did you guys you know, hear her mention that? I mean, that is absolutely fantastic. And the way that you do that is you have to build it. You have to establish relationships with people in order to build that 
network and that board of directors. But one of the other similarities is that networking and informational interviewing can be a bit anxiety producing because you're meeting people you don't know, generally speaking. Um, but there are different levels, so I'll, I'll talk about that later. Now, those are the similarities. What would you all say are the differences? And I'll we want to pass that around. Someone has differences. It's OK. You know, feel free. There's no wrong answer. Go ahead. Yeah. When I think about it, I think of networking as like more large group settings and informational interviews as a one-on-one -on -one interaction. Did you look at my slides ahead of time? Did someone give you my slides? No. <laughs> so yes, actually, you win. You win the prize. <laughs> Networking, generally speaking, is about talking to a number of people in order to identify um, the, the, maybe the people that you want to have more conversations with. Quite frankly, it's like dating, right? You know, it's about meeting lots of different people, um, you know, developing relationships. I mean, it's not about collecting business cards. Networking is actually more intentional. You know, you can collect all the business cards you want. It's not going to do you a, a bit of good if you're not intentional about why are you talking to someone? Why are you getting to know them? Why are you making any kind of contact with that person? Unless you just want to have a, a thousand LinkedIn connections, in which case, OK, you can do that. That's fine. But if you actually have a purpose, you actually have a goal, networking is where you start. OK, so one to many. Now. As, you've been, as you go out and you talk to people and you get to know them, again, you have something you'd like to learn more about. Let's say you'd like to learn more about what, it likes, what, it, what it's like to work in student affairs. And you might work in finance right now. So you, know, you may not know anybody who works in student affairs, but you're trying to figure out what would it be like to work in that department? What are the people like? What are the jobs like? What are the roles like? What would I love? What would I hate if I went to work in that department? So the goal is to find people that you can have that kind of conversation with. And that's what informational interviewing is about. It's about being able to drill down and really talk to someone for a period of time and learn about an, an, an area that you don't know a whole lot about right now. Once you actually are able to have those kinds of conversations, you then may be able to find, build allies, find people who could recommend you for a position. Um, and then, hopefully, you'll find yourself being offered the opportunity to interview. So let's look at this in a slightly different way. Think of it as three different questions that you're keeping in mind as you're approaching networking versus informational interviewing versus a formal interview. With networking, the question is that you want to keep in mind, what do you do? Just, you know, hi, my name is, you know, what do you do? We ask that all the time, right? That's a typical networking question. You're looking for people. You're trying to make connections. You're trying to build a network. Typically, the exchange is rather you know, casual, like today. You're, you're going to meet, oh, I don't know what, there's like 500 people or something here today. You're going to meet a lot of different people, um, maybe make some brief connections, and find folks that you might want to talk to a little more. Perhaps it'll turn into an informational interview, in which case the question you're asking is, OK, I know now what you do, but I don't know how you do it. How do you do what you do? That's the question that, that, that you might have in your mind as you're talking to people to learn about their career paths. So it's a longer discussion, right? And it's not about asking for a job, not at all. If those, that person that you get to know happens to recommend you, then of course the question that you're asking in a formal interview is, what are you looking for? You know, what does this role demand? What kind of skills are you looking for in this particular job? Then it's a formal interview, and you're on your game. right? So three different types of experiences. Is that clear? Any questions about that? Seem pretty straightforward? Yes? OK, fantastic. So for those of you who did not have the opportunity to, to uh, participate in a networking workshop previously, I'm just going to give you four quick secrets. Um, very straightforward, just so that you kind of have the context. So when you're approaching networking, the first and the most important thing is you really have to write down, first you have to know what you want, and you have to write them down. Write down your goals. 
it's so incredibly important. Why? Because you cannot achieve anything unless you know what it is you want. Uh, I work with graduate students all the time, business students at University of San Francisco. And so often they sit down with me, as, as I'm career coach, and they sit down with me and I say, well, what do you want to do? What, what, what do you want to do? And they say, uh, I'm flexible. Uh, OK, well, is there a job called manager of flexible? I, 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 really, I mean, think about it. There's, there's no job called manager of flexible. You have to know what you want so that you can go to someone and say, what is your name, Sarah? You can say, hi, Sarah, you know? And someone, Sarah says, well, Vanessa, what do you want to do? I, I need to be able to tell Sarah something. I can't just say, oh, you know, I'm kind of open. <laughs> you know? um, would you hire me if I said I was kind of open? Maybe not. Maybe not. OK, write down your goals you know, and spend some time thinking about that. Second is learning to, to talk about what you want, to ask for what you want. Um, there's a common term. Has anybody heard the term elevator pitch in here before? You know, OK, so elevator pitch is simply being able to express in a concise way what it is you do and what it is you're looking to learn more about. You know, it's not necessarily about barreling into someone and saying, hi, I'm Vanessa, and I want a job doing X. A lot of times it's just saying, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm exploring, and I'd love to learn more about student affairs, athletic operations, finance, fill in the blank. You know, so when you're in an event like this and someone asks you why you're here, you want to be able to tell them in a very casual, concise way what it is you're interested in. The third, this is the hardest one, you guys getting out of your comfort zone, opening your mouth, and actually talking to someone. Talk, like communication. <laughs> it's really challenging. It's hard to get out of our comfort zone. We, we like to talk to our friends. We like to talk to our colleagues, the people we feel safe with, right? So it, that's comfy. But getting out of that zone and talking to someone that you don't know, that's harder. But that's how you build that network. And the fourth one is simply asking open-ended questions to break the ice, um, to start the conversation. Guess what? Everybody else is just as anxious as you are, but someone's got to break the ice. Someone's got to go first. It might as well be you. Right. So later, you can then get to the point where you can ask further questions. Do you know anyone who works in X area? Do you know anyone who does Y? Because you want to learn. Right. Four very basic approaches to networking that I will encourage you all to keep in mind as you're going about your day today. So let's do a little practice. So each of you, I'm going to just ask you to turn to the person next to you, or if there's three of you, you can huddle. Um, do a little icebreaker exercise to get to know each other, because I'm assuming you don't all know each other in the room. Or do you? Does everybody know everybody? We can skip this? <laughs> you know everybody. So OK, so just introduce yourself. Ask the person, what do you do? Um, name, position, department. And then basic, simple, like, why are you here? What inspired you to come to this conference today? And I'd like you all to share just at least one objective, a resource, a strategy, a, a, a whatever that you would like to learn or discover today. Because you never know if the person next to you may be able to help you today or later. You know, follow up with you and say, hey, you know what? You said you were interested in finding out about X. I met someone. And let me connect the two of you. So I'm going to turn you loose for a couple of minutes. Go ahead and introduce yourselves. Hopefully, that gave you the opportunity to get to know your table mates a little bit, get to know, just at least say hi, find out who it is you're sitting next to. Um, so when you have gone out and you've started doing networking, or perhaps you've been continuing doing networking, you know, it's great. You can accumulate all these connections. You know, you might have 300 connections on LinkedIn because you've been out there talking to people and, you know, connecting with them online. That's fabulous. OK, now what? All right, what do you do with all of that? It means that you now need to focus on a few people, just a few. You don't have to have informational interviews with, like, all 722 LinkedIn connections. Start with just a few, right? Have that dialogue, have that discussion, and you're thinking, oh, yeah, let me add it. This is great, right? 
well, actually, most people look like that. <laughs> They're like, no, I don't want to actually have to talk to anybody in depth. It's like, I just wanted to be able to kind of say hi, you know, connect on LinkedIn and go back to what I was doing. Truth is, you can actually have a lot of fun. Really, I promise you, you can have a lot of fun with informational interviewing. It doesn't have to be all torture. Um, now, let me talk a little bit about what it actually is. So, first of all, it's really a dialogue. It truly is. It's a dialogue with you, between you and someone else who you would love to learn more about. And the things that you might want to ask them about can vary. It doesn't have to be this entire list, but it can include what they do, their actual role. It can be about the company that they, or the department that they work in. Um, trends, direction, even the culture. Did you hear the keynote speaker talking about how she had to educate you know, her leader on the culture? That can be a really great discussion to have with someone. Um, their career path, obviously, how did they get there? Maybe their educational background. And I'm not just talking about degrees. It might be about certifications, you know, a project management certification or an agile certification or career coaching certification. Um, you can talk to them about educational background. Also, the sort of intangibles. What does it take to actually be successful in that role? A lot of times, I don't know about you guys, and you know, raise your hand if you've ever done this, but if you ever you know, found, identified a, a, a good role and you thought, this sounds like fun, this sounds like something I could do, you applied for it and you got it, and you got into it, and then you went, oh, this isn't really what I thought it was gonna be. Maybe that's never happened to any of you. Maybe that's just me. <laughs> you know? So, yeah, you, you, you have to find out ahead of time what skills are required and what it takes to be successful because you may not realize until you get in the job that it's not really a job that taps your skill set, um, but you just somehow landed in it. Good to talk to people ahead of time about that. Also, suggestions on possible career paths for you. You can ask someone, like, based on my background, here's what I've done. What do you think would be a good next step for me in order to move in the direction that you've been in, you know, you talking to this person? So you, you can ask these questions. You don't have to ask them all. You can ask a few. You can ask one. You drive the conversation. That's the most important thing to keep in mind. But the number one thing, and I will say this for the third time, it's not about asking for a job. When you're doing an informational interview with someone, you are taking um, their time, but they're giving you their time generously because it feels safe. You're not coming to them hat in hand saying, please hire me. You're coming to them saying, I just want to talk to you. I just want to learn. And that's the best situation to be in, quite honestly, um, for you and for them. The other thing is it does require a little more time you know, you could do a 15 minute informational interview that's kind of short, 30 minute, even an hour. Um, but it, you know, you have to know your, the person and whether that is acceptable to them. Um, so, but it's not something that you would do at even like an event like today, unless you guys like run off and sit somewhere and just decide to forego all the other breakout sessions and just talk. I mean, you could do that. Um, so I encourage you all to do another exercise. So. Think of yourself as a journalist. I call this the Barbara Walters exercise, where I'm going to encourage you all, maybe in the in interest of time, I might ask you to just pick one of these questions. Um, ask your partner, the same person you just talked to, now to tell you a little bit more about the work that they do. You can ask them how they chose their line of work. You can ask them what skills they need to do. Or maybe you can ask them, what's the next step for them? You are the journalist interviewing your partner, but in a way that's not grilling, it's just more about information gathering. Does that make sense? Does that feel right? Okay, so I'm gonna turn you loose for a couple minutes. Just pick one question and converse. <laughs> Would love to hear from some volunteers and we will need to use the mic. I'd love to hear what you learned. If you'd like to volunteer from your discussion. What did you learn about your partner? Don't be shy. Okay, yes. You'll pass her the mic. Yeah. 
I learned that she had already gone an informational interview and found out that she needed to get, or she was told that she needed to get a, a master's degree in order to be hired in that particular area that she wanted to go in. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that I had recommended, because, you know, that's expensive. Yeah. To, like, okay, now I've got to spend, you know, tens of thousands of dollars to do that. So I told her that maybe uh, she could find a place where she could volunteer, mm -hmm. either with the government or um, some, you know, ESL or something like that. that and w where she can work with other people from other yeah. countries yeah. and be able to kind of demonstrate that she has a particular skill with uh -huh. international uh -huh. academics and that sort of thing. So, um, And then, it. and that's, this is your partner here? Yeah. What is your name? <laughs> Iris. Iris, so pass her the mic. Oh, we yeah. didn't get a chance to switch. Oh, I you know. guys had such a good time talking. <laughs> I know, I feel bad. So, okay, so what was it like for you to hear that sort of feedback? Um, she brought up some really good points that I didn't think about. I was just like, oh, a master's degree. But then she, she brought up how like I could improve my experience doing other things, so now I'm going to look into that. Fantastic, fantastic. So, and then later you guys can maybe switch. <laughs> so other uh, observations or learnings or just sort of interesting points along the way that you want to share? Oh, I'll pass it along. Here you are. I always love a microphone. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> okay, I digress. Um, so Tracy is my partner and um, we only really talked about me um, so we didn't get a chance to, so maybe next time a little more time on this, because this is really valuable. Okay. <laughs> um, but anyway, um, so I really appreciate that Tracy was telling me to, reminding me really to advocate for myself. Mm -hmm. And I was telling her how, you know, I want to go, you know, to Toastmasters and their, um, to better my speaking skills uh, and you know but I feel guilty taking time off of work because usually it's during the middle of the day and yeah. you know and she just reminded me and encouraged me she's mm -hmm. like do it next week so, <laughs> and I'm just like okay yeah I'm gonna do it next week <laughs> so. so and then pass the mic to Tracy so since you were interviewing her what question did you ask her I asked her what do you what does she see as the next step in her career and so how was that experience for you as the interviewer? Um, well, I learned that in her position, um, she's kind of at the highest level. And so for her to go to the next level, she has to move out of her comfort zone and move to kind of a different area, different um, department, not necessarily where she's at right now. So that was interesting. Uh -huh. And so how, what did that teach you in terms of as you think about your own career path? Because you're interviewing her to learn about her experience. Um, I think it taught me that you can get somewhere as far as she is and know her job really well and have her skills, and still there's going to be a time that comes where you want to move up and you have to do more and have more skills and do other things if you want to you know, go on to something else. Which is very much like what our keynote speaker was talking about mm -hmm. today. I mean, she was a perfect example that, you know, unless you want to stay where you are, which is totally fine, but if you want to move on or move up or over, you know, it is about sort of reimagining what that future might look like and having the courage, right? Courage is very important in stepping out and trying to identify new paths. So thank you guys for volunteering. It's so fantastic. So I'll, just, I'll, I'll hold on to that. Okay, here. okay so, um, and I really encourage you all to chat afterwards and so you can kind of share and you can hear about what Tracy's up to. So, so let's talk a little bit about the nuts and bolts of informational interviewing. So you all have gotten a taste of it now. We're gonna dive a little deeper. We're gonna cover who do you talk to because there's different levels of people that you might want to talk to. Where do you find them? <laughs> you know, where do you find these people? Um, how do you invite someone to do an informational interview? What do you talk about when you actually are there in the meeting? And then next steps. So who, or whom, to be correct, do you talk to? To whom do you talk? Uh, so think of it as four different levels. Um, you could use this sort of concentric circle, or it could be stair step. but um, imagine yourself, you're here, right? Right there. So the first level, talking to families, friends, colleagues, that feels comfortable, right? That's, that's not too threatening, that's not too scary. Family, of course, very easy. Friends, 
pretty easy. Colleagues, maybe a little scarier, but still, I mean, these are colleagues that you talk to all the time. You know, you know them, they know you, you've been working together for quite some time. The people on the first level are very, I hear a lot of activity going on next door. <laughs> Just, as long as there's no blood, it's, all, it's okay, right? <laughs> Right. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, what is going on? <laughs> uh, so the families, friends, colleagues, that level are, that's the safe level, relatively safe level. In terms of talking to someone to learn more about a uh, skill set or career path or just experience, you know, that, uh, would you all agree that that, you know, that first level is not too hard? Okay. Now, the second level, and I apologize if it's hard to read, it says colleagues slash LinkedIn first level. So you're people who are your first level connections on LinkedIn. And then these would be people that you sort of know. Differentiated in terms of colleagues from people that you actually know, you work with all the time, they know you. So you know, maybe you go out to lunch with them. The people who are the first levels that you sort of know, how many of you have LinkedIn connections with people, first level LinkedIn connections, with people that you're not super close to, but you accepted their invitation because you know you know of them and you've seen them around and you know they seem like good people. Okay, yeah, all of us do. So these are the people that you could reach out to and say, "Hey, I saw you. I've seen you at this conference the last two years, or you know, I, I've I've seen you in our department meetings, but maybe you've never actually sat down and talked to them." But you know, you you could reach out to them. You could have a conversation, and it wouldn't be all that scary. Um, they don't may not know your children's names, but you know, but you could have a, a, a totally reasonable and and somewhat easy conversation, reaching out to them to ask them about their careers. The third level, these are people who would be your LinkedIn second level connections. So these are people that you might know of, but you don't know personally, and they don't really know you. But you, you know, and this could be people here in the university, I mean, people who work in different departments, you've heard their name, you've heard them mentioned, you know, for different reasons. They maybe, maybe they provide services, maybe they're a rock star, maybe they're just like good people that you've always been meaning to reach out and get to know, that you've heard of, but you don't know them, right? So it's a little bit further removed. Finally, the highest level are people that you don't know at all, right? So, let give you an example. Um, it could be, let's say you work in finance, that's always easy, um, here at the university, and you decide you want to make a big career switch, and you want to go work in, for Google, right, in finance. Just, just, just go there, right? Just totally different. You don't know anybody there, right? That's that level. But there may be someone that you've read about, and you would think, I would love to, to meet that person, but I, I don't know them, they don't know me, I don't know how I'd ever get to, to connect with that person. Or it could be somebody here at the university that you would love to meet, but you don't even know their name, you just know like there's probably a director of X, but you don't really know who that person is. That's that level. So the conversations that you have with these people at these different levels, are they're different. From a little bit somewhat informal to very, very formal in terms of reaching out and asking for an informational interview. Um, so let's just keep that in mind, and I'll come back to that. Second, where do you meet them? Well, everywhere, right? So at work, you meet people, people you want to talk to. You meet them everywhere. You meet them in person. You meet them online. This is all pretty um, self-explanatory. But you're surrounded by potential opportunities to connect with people that you could learn from, whether it's here at the university, maybe it's in a professional association, maybe it is a networking event, could be a family gathering, could be a cousin that you know, you've know you never really talked to before and you start chatting and suddenly realize, wow, this person, like, you know, they've changed jobs and now they do something really interesting. I want to know more. Um, could be a range of, of, of activities in person. Online, LinkedIn, I put the three asterisks because it is the number one place to connect with people professionally. But there's also Facebook. You know, there are people that you see on Facebook all the time that you might think, huh, I'd like to actually talk to that person because I see they're doing X, Y, Z, and so on and so forth. Are, are there any, um, um, anything I left out of this that you all can think of, of like where you might meet someone to just learn more or might intrigue you about what they do? Yes? Um, I 
I had a friend who... Oops. You know how you, you got to do everything on the mic here. Yeah, yeah. Um, I know you put a lot of social media out there, but I had a friend who like tweeted at somebody and got an internship. Ah, Twitter. Yes, so, of course. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Perfect. I completely, completely forgot about Twitter. Yes. Is a hand? Yes. I often meet people and also hear other folks meeting on public transportation that start networking really? connections. Really? Get up. That's fantastic. I love that. And just starting sitting next to someone on the bar or maybe. And you know how folks often start with the how, what do you do? Yeah. And so yeah. that can kind of spiral into something. Fabulous. That's a networking opportunity. I love it. I love it. So you never know. You never know where you, you might meet someone. One of our um, students actually met a potential, uh, uh, he got his summer internship at the gym from someone that he actually was a personal trainer with. I mean, it, it, ha it happens. It's just about talking to people. Um, now, how do you invite someone to, it's very, actually very simple. Either you're gonna, it's gonna be in person or it's gonna be typically online, right? If it's in person, it might be like an event like here. You know, you're having a brief discussion with someone. You just realize that they do something really interesting. You wanna know more. And you'd say, okay, you, I would love to get together for coffee you know, or lunch. Would you be available to meet with me? Because I'd love to talk with you about more about what you do. So you're sharing your interests, your goals, because something they have said has piqued your interest, and you're asking them if they could be willing to get together with you. I suggest that if you do t meet someone or you're talking to someone in a casual setting and you would like to do an informational interview, follow up with an email. Get their card and follow up with an actual email invitation so that you can actually you know, detail what you want to talk to that person about. Um, and then secondarily, uh, through LinkedIn or email, you know, you would, like, let's say you, you see someone on LinkedIn, they're a second or first level connection that you don't know so well, but they do something interesting. You would want to send them an email invitation or LinkedIn invitation uh, sorry, an email through LinkedIn that says, hi, um, I know we're connected, but I, I, I'm looking to move into this field, and I see you're doing X, Y, Z. I would love to learn more about the work that you do um, and how you've gotten to where you've gotten. So, and suggest a time to meet. Now, you can meet in, by phone, or you can meet in person. A rule of thumb, if you're going to have a phone informational interview, it should be shorter than an in-person interview. So people are super busy. So if you, if you say, I'd love to meet by phone and you know, if we could talk 20 minutes, that'd be great. If they then decide in the course of the conversation to let it go 30 or 45, that's up to them. But initially, you know, suggest perhaps 15 to 20 minute conversation. You can always have more than one, but just to at least start that conversation going. Um, so, this is how you go ahead and do that invitation. Um, what do you say when you're actually there? Imagine you've gotten your informational interview granted. You're going to meet them by phone or in person, either way. Now the question is, how does the conversation actually flow? First, establish rapport, break the ice, you know, something, tell them a little bit about why you're so excited about the work that they do or what it was that intrigued you when you met them or saw whatever, saw an article about them or you know, what, something to kind of get the conversation going. Um, then you describe very briefly what is the key thing or key things you want to talk about, um, you know, prioritize. You might say, you know, I really want to focus on this one key thing in the course of our conversation because I know we only have 20 minutes. I really want to learn more about how you got a certification in X or how you um, decided to pursue this career. Whatever you want to know, lay it out at the beginning of the conversation so if you run out of time, you have gotten your most important questions answered first, okay? Um, come with questions, and I strongly recommend that when you send that email invitation, you put the topics, the two topics or the three topics, or even the questions in the email, so that when they get to the phone meeting or the in-person meeting, they're ready. They're not just sitting there just kind of waiting for you to come up with something, but they know what the agenda is, if you will, because this is a business meeting. I mean, unless it's with like a family member. Um, then, here's the four, number four is really, really, really important. 
even though it's an informational interview and you are driving the interview, you're the one who has requested it, you're the one with all the questions, they're going to have questions for you too. Right? So it's not like Barbara Walters doesn't usually get asked about her personal background when she's doing an interview. Right? You will get asked. They will ask you, tell me about yourself. And, and that might come in the very beginning of the conversation. Right? So you have to have an answer about who you are and what it is you're doing and why you want to be, why you're there. All right? So it's, it's a two-way conversation. Number five, keep your eye on the time. There's nothing worse than doing an informational interview with someone and telling them you, you know, you'll, it's only going to take 20 minutes and they have a hard stop at 20 and you're still talking at 30. Right? So keep your eye on the time. Summarize your key points at the end of the conversation, and maybe if there's a next step, tell them what the next step's going to be, and you know, say thank you. Now, don't just say thank you verbally, but actually, let me see. I think this is. I just want to double check. Yes, when you leave and you follow up, you want to have a, a in writing a thank you note. In your thank you note, in your follow-up thank you note, you want to express what you learned. Not in detail, but why the, why the meeting was meaningful to you. So that the person feels like, wow, you know, I, I, I'm glad I helped this person. So don't, you know, say thank you for your meeting. I, I really enjoyed having the opportunity to talk with you. Um, in particular, you know, your insights on XYZ were really, really helpful. Um, and I'd love to stay in touch. Stay in touch. Um, and if you've promised that you're going to do something or, or send them some information, do it. And do it right away. Don't wait two weeks or whatever. Like, do what you say you're going to do. It's extremely, extremely important. Um, OK. So I have actually covered the who, the when, the where, the how, and the next step. Now I'm going to go into a case study, because we have 15 more minutes. But before I do that, I want to just make sure, let me go back to this page just in case you all didn't get all of this. Are there any questions about the tactics? Because I know I've covered it quickly. You will have a copy of this presentation online. What did I do with it? Oh, there we go. Yes. Now is your time to ask anything you want about tactics. Um, in your oh, did I turn it off? Okay. <laughs> um, oh, there. Sorry. In your intro email, yes. how much background story for yourself and yes. goals should you include? Yes. Great question. Thank you. So, it depends on how well you know the person. If you don't know the person very well, let's say they are one of those first level LinkedIn connections that you sort of know. Now, mind you, depends who you're writing to. So if it's here in the university, realize it's a small community, <laughs> right? So you want to present the purpose of your discussion, but you want to be judicious about what you say, about why you're writing, right? No airing dirty laundry, you know? No, right, be as positive as possible because it's a small community. I mean, let's just be like, mindful of that. So, but when you talk about yourself, you can say things like, you know, I, I work in IT department um, and I've been here for the last <clears throat> five years and um, I see that you work in this other division and, um, and I have done this, these three things that I'm really excited and proud about and I'm trying to figure out um, how I can expand my knowledge and my understanding about this area of the university. Um, so you can talk about who you are, what your background is, um, and maybe what you're proud of or what you've done and how long you've been there. Something to give them a flavor for who you are as a person. Um, it's not a resume, and no one's asked this yet, but I would not suggest you attach your resume. Don't do that. What you can do is you can attach your LinkedIn profile, your, link, your, your URL to your LinkedIn, because that's how people are looking you up these days anyway. 
So if you don't have a LinkedIn new profile, you want to create one. That's a whole other workshop. <laughs> you know? um, but you can attach your LinkedIn profile link and say, if you want to learn more about my background, here's my LinkedIn um, you know, that I invite you to. Um, so that way, you don't have to also write a whole page long thing on what you've done. Um, but yeah, talk a little bit about yourself, what you're, what you're looking to do, what you're interested in, and what's brought you to this person. Um, does that help? Yes. Is there. Recently, uh, I've been doing informational interviews with units on campus where the only way I ever knew they even existed was I saw a job posting. Mm -hmm. So my goal is to find out as much as I can about that unit and how they're structured yeah. and so forth. <clears throat> but I want, I'm never sure how appropriate it is to say in that opening introduction, I plan on applying for the position you have open or I have submitted an application. What's the etiquette there? Uh, uh, so in that case, you're already in job search mode, right? So versus in the information gathering mode. So you're already further along down when I talked about networking, informational interviewing, and then formal interviewing. You're already in the f hopefully formal, hope to be interviewed stage. Um, when you're doing the outreach, if you're reaching out to someone who works in that unit who is not the hiring manager, okay, then you can say, you know what, I, have, um, I recently saw an opportunity in your department. Um, I'm considering it because I'm looking at all of my options, and I just want to get a better understanding of, of that unit's goals um, and focus and culture. And I wondered if you would be willing to talk to me a little bit about that. Um, you could say, you know, I'm, I'm actively interested in the department. I've, I've seen a few roles that are really, really appealing. You don't have to go into gory detail in the, in the email. You can, if they ask, when you get into discussion and they ask you if you apply, then you can share that. But for now, you can just say, you know, I'm really interested to learn more um, because I'm, I'm, I'm actively exploring opportunities. So hopefully that helps. Okay. Any other checking the time here. Any other last question on tactics before we go into the case study? No? Guys are good? Oh, yeah. This table is rocking. <laughs> um, so this might be a really <laughs> um, awkward question, but so when you go to a coffee or lunch with mm -hmm. the other person, um, and I don't know if it's because of my cultural background, um, do you pay for every ah. one and like do you offer to pay or is that is there a right etiquette is it like hmm. stepping on foot of the other person yeah you know there is no one way to do that okay some if it's if it's just coffee mm -hmm. literally just coffee and it's going to cost you like 10 dollars right it's it's a nice gesture of goodwill uh -huh. um, if you go to lunch you don't have to pay for lunch. That's okay. especially depending on if you're, I mean, you look like you're probably still early in your career, <laughs> you know? It, it would be a lot to expect for someone to offer to pay for lunch. I see. Um, you know, if you're at a more senior level, then typically one person might pick up the tab for the other. So, I see. you know, but if you're an early career person and you're talking to a more senior level career person, they're not gonna let you pay for lunch. Okay. Yeah, they're just not, as, out of common whatever. They, they're just not going to let you do that. So, I so see. it's okay to pay independently, pay separately. I see. You know, um, but if it's literally just a cup of coffee, it's a nice gesture. You uh -huh. know, say hey, I'd like to get you a cup of coffee. They can always say no. They can always uh -huh. say, oh, that's okay. Okay. You know, so yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so Sounds yeah, good. be be. It's it's no one's trying to take you to the cleaners. You know? uh, well, I was just wondering because I'm taking their time, and you know, yes, yeah. is they're out of their good will yeah. to talk to me. Right. And I, it's, it's like, is, is it a proper gesture for me to, oh, like, let me take this and... If you want to do that, you're entirely welcome to do it. And it is a lovely gesture, but it is not expected that you will pay for their lunch. Um, if they are, especially someone, especially if there's a differential, you I know. See. If you're kind of, it's, if it's a lateral thing and you're mm -hmm. at the same level, mm -hmm. 
and you want to, you, you can, but it's not expected. I think that's the important thing to note. It's not expected, you know. Okay. It's, they're offering to meet with you because they want to help you, I see. right? Not okay. because they want a free lunch. So, I, that, I, that's my opinion. I mean, I, you know, maybe the other people may think differently. Um, so, so let me, I, we have just about 10 minutes left, so I want to make sure we get to do our uh, interactive exercise. Um, so I am going to, I'm going to need to read this, but I'm going to skip past this because we have a picture. Okay, so case study. In the middle, we have, this is a true story. The names and identifying characteristics have been changed to protect the innocent. Um, but but uh, we have Alex Smith. Alex is 35 years old. She is a network analyst at a major health science university. You're all not allowed to guess. Um, she's uh, spent 10 years in the IT department uh, and has been very successful, very, very good at what she does. But she hasn't been able to move up. She's tried many times and just hasn't been able to move up. The other thing is she doesn't know anybody really in the university because she has spent a lot of her time working um, and knows people in her department, but she doesn't really know a lot of people across campus. Now, she went back to school part-time and she got her law degree and uh, just finished that up, but she doesn't want to practice law. You know, she doesn't want to be an attorney, but she likes law as a field. You know, she really enjoys it. Um, and she has not taken the bar exam. And she's not really sure if she wants to do that. Um, the one thing she does know is she wants to stay at the university. Now, in terms of her interests, on the other side, she really likes technology, but she wants to get out of IT. Um, but, but again, she likes the technology field. She likes policy in general. She's just one, she's, you know, thinks of herself as a policy wonk. Um, she has a little bit of knowledge of HIPAA, which, do you all know what HIPAA is? Um, it's patient privacy, health portability, uh, <laughs> health insurance portability, uh, and something, something. Um, you know, but it's all about making sure you keep your patient records private. Um, and so she's also you know, interested in privacy as a field. Um, but she doesn't know a lot about it, but she's, she's interested in it. Um, you know, there are no jobs in the privacy department right now, though, and she doesn't know anybody in privacy anyway. But it's kind of interesting. Her dilemma is how does she get out of IT, and where does she go? What are her options? What, what should be her next steps? Now, the one thing is she does know, she knows that just a few people on campus outside her department. She knows Tanya. Tanya is the associate director of research. So she doesn't know Tanya. Um, Tanya knows Ellen. Ellen is a career coach in the Women's Center. Alex doesn't know Ellen. Alex knows of Ellen. She's heard of Ellen, but she doesn't actually know Ellen. Ellen happens to know Shirley, who is actually the director of privacy, the privacy department. Um, Alex doesn't know Shirley at all. Didn't even know, doesn't even know Shirley's name, you know. Um, so, these are the relationships that we have here. Now, because we have, we have 10 minutes, so I think we can pull this off. What I'm gonna ask you to do at your tables, work together as a team, would like you all to come up with a strategy. What should Alex do in order to get in the door? You know, most likely privacy, but what should she do? It's not as simple as it looks, just as a tip. <laughs> but huddle together. I'm going to give you a couple of minutes to talk and flesh out some ideas. And then when I bring you back, I'd like to have a representative from at least a couple different tables tell me what you came up with as a strategy to help Alex get out of IT, you know, figure out a game plan, and maybe get into the privacy department, knowing that there are no jobs there. Go. <laughs> you guys come up with a strategy? Anybody still need more time? You good? Okay. All right. So, since your table has the mic, <laughs> do you guys want to go first and share what your strategy was? Um, we actually come up with four strategy. Um, so. 
perhaps Alex can talk, um, have lunch with Tanya, and or she can look at Tanya's LinkedIn profile and see her connection, and then perhaps ask Tanya, say, could we have lunch with so and so, perhaps Alan um, from the Career Center, or Alex can join staff assembly, like because she wants to work. At the university, mm -hmm. so there must have a lot of organization on campus, and where she can do networking, mm -hmm. and know what people do does for work, and then to do the informational uh -huh. interviewing after, okay. and then in the end would we'll lead her somehow to Shirley. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now next table. Who wants to go next? Um, so we came up with a couple different strategies, um, one of them being Alex um, kind of talking to her circle of friends and Tanya being one of those saying that she's interested uh, in making a career change and then talking, um, having Tanya you know, introduce her via email to Ellen and talking to Ellen about possibilities. Um, because there may be something outside of privacy that really fits her well. Mm -hmm. Kind of sounds like she's not really set on privacy, that she has a bunch of different interests. So mm -hmm. first step would be talking to Ellen and yeah. um, talking about uh, different opportunities. Okay, cool. Next table. <laughs> Everybody's like, you take the mic, not you take the mic. <laughs> so we uh, came up with the fact that since Alex knows Tanya, Tanya is going to be her main point of contact, um, I would think she would say, hey, Tanya, I'm interested in this. I'm not really sure which way to go. And so because Tanya knows Ellen, and that's Ellen's job is to direct those that don't know which way they're wanting to go. Uh -huh. So then if she does the introduction via email, or maybe they can all go to coffee, and then they could all sit down, and Ellen could give her some direction on where to go. Mm -hmm. So whether she's introducing her to Shirley or introducing her to someone else where she could get some information about mm -hmm. what's next steps for her career. OK, cool. Next table. I'm going through every table. Yes, I am, because we got time. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. Don't be shy. Just perfect. Came in the door. So um, we talked about her starting in the, the circles of who she knew, mm -hmm. like Tanya, other mm -hmm. people she might know, um, just to go have a coffee or have a lunch. And, and in those conversations, perhaps she would get connected to Ellen. Mm -hmm. um, and as it goes up the line, get more, getting more formal mm -hmm. informational interviews, setting you know, mm -hmm. uh, agenda for the talk and the time and all mm -hmm. that. Um, we didn't actually mention that, but um, <laughs> <laughs> um, maybe looking into uh, uh, the areas of interest. Mm -hmm. um, are there some little certification classes she could take that might get her more up to speed on some of those? Maybe interview, inter investigating the uh, privacy department, you know, and the people that work there. How did they get there? What are their backgrounds? Mm -hmm. um, stalking them on the bus. <laughs> stalking um, them on the bus. <laughs> okay. What else? Did we mention anything else? Yeah, I don't think so. Okay. Oops. Uh, um, uh, I'm sure. There's okay. Something. So, pass it along. Pass it along. Go ahead. This cracks me up. I love this. You do it. You do it. You do it. <laughs> um, we, I would say, sort of echo a lot of the process that folks have talked about so far. Um, you know, getting to Ellen, having an opportunity to talk a little more and explore um, what possible options were out there. Um, and it might be then an opportunity to do something like an inter uh, informational interview with Shirley. But since there aren't any jobs there, maybe there are opportunities after that to kind of say, um, if there are any sort of projects or volunteer opportunities, maybe some sort of shadowing, something in the department to kind of get a sense if that's something that's of interest, even though there aren't any openings at the moment, something mm -hmm. like that. Okay. Is that anything else? Kind of just building on what we. Bring one to bring to this table, sir. Bring over here. Yeah. And then we'll. Uh, I think what we talked about has mainly been covered. Uh -huh. So, a combination of reaching out to as many people as she mm -hmm. knows, either directly or through LinkedIn, and mm -hmm. making her way to Shirley. Mm -hmm. And either there's an opportunity that comes up that 
spontaneously fits <laughs> um, or perhaps, yeah. you know, she keeps her in mind for something down the road. Yeah. Okay. So anything you guys want to add? Um, we just mentioned that there might be other opportunities where um, there might be some sort of networking event and yeah. maybe um, either um, like maybe Shirley might be there, but then um, they, she might learn of other opportunities elsewhere. Mm -hmm. um, across the university where, you know, there might be more options other than privacy. Yep. Bring it home. <laughs> um, well, again, most of what we discussed has already been covered, mm -hmm. uh, but I think most importantly, Shirley is not the end road. Uh, mm -hmm. We know that there aren't any jobs there, mm -hmm. and it's not necessarily that Alex was looking for a position in privacy, but from there might come other informational interviews or um, more of an understanding on mm -hmm. what privacy even looks like, right. because that might be something that Alex finds out she's not interested in. So yes. from there, uh -huh. you know, that's not the end of the road. Excellent. You guys are awesome. 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 I just want to give you a round of applause. Woo! <laughs> Fantastic. Let me tell you what actually happened. Because this was a true story. So first, Alex contacted Tanya, yes, and asked for suggestions. Told her what it was she was interested in. Um, of course, they, they, they talk all the time, so they're friends. And she said, you know, I got to get out of IT. I've been here forever. What I, I, these are the things I think I'm interested in, but I just don't really know. So Tanya said, you know, there is a woman named Ellen who is a career coach in the Women's Center you should go talk to her. So Tanya facilitated the introduction to Ellen. She didn't have to, because Ellen works in a service-oriented role, but it made Ellen even more motivated to help Alex. So she facilitated that introduction. So Ellen met with Alex and helped her focus on her career path and define some goals, right? Because she was so unsure. So did some assessments talked her through different options, helped to identify some goals. And given her interest in privacy, she did recommend that Alex do an informational interview with Shirley in the privacy department. So Ellen did the referral on her behalf. She's the one who set up the, in, in, by email because she knew Shirley. Um, and so she did the introduction to Shirley and, and said, here's this wonderful person named Alex. I've learned this much about her. Here's her background. She would love to talk with you to learn more about your department. Alex then followed up with an email herself, reiterating what um, Ellen had said and requested some time. And Shirley said yes. So during the informational interview, Alex learned about the activities, the goals, you know, the structure of the privacy department, to your point, what privacy actually is. But she also sold herself, sold her skills, talked about what she had done, talked about what she was good at, because this is a hiring manager. So remember, when you're thinking about these steps of, of engagement, this is someone who's in a position to hire you. So you're on your best behavior. You are presenting yourself. Even though it's an informational interview, it is potentially also the first stage in a real interview. Right? So be on her game, and she was. And so she talked about what she knew, um, her law degree, her general vague knowledge of HIPAA, but they both knew there were no opportunities there. What she did do, and this came up, I think over this part of the room, was volunteer. She said, look, since there are no opportunities in your department, and I'm really interested in learning more, I would love to be able to serve as a point of contact with NIT for privacy. So that as you're dealing with issues that come up around the university, you know, I'll work with my manager, but I would be happy to be your point of contact and support you in any way that I can. Shirley was very impressed with that level of initiative. So they developed a relationship. Alex stayed in touch with Shirley, and nine months later, a position opened up in privacy, and Shirley knew whom to go to. And she hired Alex. And so, informational interviewing does work. Um, if you marry it with a number of other things, like learning how to talk about yourself, learning how to sell yourself, and also volunteering and, and being actively engaged. 
um, in the organization. So all of you came up with the answer as a collective. I love that. Fantastic. Congratulations. So here's your homework as we leave today. Each of you, I'd like to encourage you to think about one career goal that you have. And whatever it may be, I mean, it could just be you want to learn more about something in particular. Talk to at least three people here at the conference uh, to see if they may be able to, you can learn something from them along the lines of what you're hoping to, to gather information on. Or maybe they can refer you on to someone that you can talk to in depth about your career goal. If you do get a recommendation to meet someone or talk with someone, contact them and set up an informational interview. For those of you who've already been doing this, congratulations, you're on the right path. For those of you who've never done this or haven't done it maybe sporadically in the past, here's your chance to do it again. So with that, I say challenge yourself, have fun with informational interview, interviewing, and enjoy the conference. So last point. There are evaluations on the seats. If you could please take a moment and complete them, they will be collected. And you now have a 15-minute break to your next uh, breakout session. Thank you very much. Thank you.